YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to walk you guys through my current arrow setup. So it is hunting season where I'm at and these are my arrows literally still in the quiver that I have been using so far this hunting season. In fact, this arrow right here is the one that I used to kill that antelope. If you guys haven't watched that video, actually I'll include a link down in the bio. Definitely go check it out later. But I'm gonna share with you guys the way that my arrows are currently set up and things that I'm considering doing or changing for the future. So let's get right into it. Currently, I am running Easton Full Metal Jackets. They are five millimeters and 400 spine arrows. In the past, I was using a carbon arrow, I believe it was by Beeman, and I switched to the Full Metal Jackets because I wanted a heavier arrow. I'm out here hunting elk, and for me, having a heavy arrow that's gonna pack a big punch and quiet down my bow, kind of all of the above, was really important to me. I don't know the weight of these particular arrows off the top of my head, but I will put that on the screen now. They're pretty heavy. And not saying I'm unhappy with the arrows, but I'm considering changing to a carbon arrow, possibly Beeman, possibly Victory, I don't know if you have other brands that you like, comment down below, but I'm thinking about going to a carbon arrow, something a little bit faster, because I will be hunting whitetail here in November, December, even into January and February, and I think that a fast carbon arrow will do really well for whitetail. So I've been playing with that. I've been thinking, probably not during this elk season, but potentially after elk ends, during rifle mule deer. I'll obviously be hunting mule deer with a rifle, but in my downtime, I might, you know, switch over to a carbon arrow, see what happens. Just a thought. In terms of knock, I have got on here the X knock. This is just the standard knock by Easton that comes with the full metal jacket whenever you purchase it, and they've been working great. They fit my string really well, haven't had any issues whatsoever. The only idea that I have with my knocks is possibly switching to a lighted knock. Now, where I'm at currently, that is illegal for hunting, so I will not be doing that while I'm here hunting, but back in Pennsylvania, lighted knocks are allowed for hunting, and frankly, I think they'd be cool in video, I think they'd be cool to see my arrow in flight, so we'll see. It's an idea that I've been playing with, although I've never used lighted knocks before, so that would definitely be a learning and testing experience for me. As far as my fletchings go, I currently run three fletchings per arrow. These are the AAE Max Hunter veins. They are the high profile 2.1 inch, and I really love them. I've been fletching my own arrows for two years now, and ever since I started fletching my own arrows, these are the veins that I've been using. The only issues I've ever had have been with my damn glue, which I've gotten better glue now. I actually use an Easton branded glue. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I'll link that down below as well. And it's been doing great. But I have friends, and I know a lot of folks who like to run four fletchings per arrow. And I'm curious, is that really worth it if you run for fletchings, comment below, because I don't think it's something that I'm gonna switch to, honestly, just because it's gonna take me more time to fletch each arrow and I barely have enough time as it is. So unless it's gonna really, you know, improve my arrow flight, I've been loving my vein setup. Lines up great with my broadheads, like, it's good. When I do fletch my arrows, I'm using, it's a, oh, it's like a boning, I'll link that down below too. It's that red fletching tower that you saw in a video maybe about a month ago when I was refletching arrows. And I've gotta say, I'm not really into that one. I'd I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I know there's some metal higher quality fletching towers that are really nice. So it was a cheap option, but might not have been the best. Works, but you know, maybe not the best. Now down to the broadheads, I have got, here let me show ya. These are the QAD Exodus fixed blade broadheads. And so far I do like them. I am thinking about playing around with other broadheads. Broadheads are something that, I don't know, I feel like you can never try enough broadheads to see how you like them. 
in terms of their functionality, I mean, I killed my antelope with one a couple weeks back so far this year. So seems to be doing its job, but I might, I might play around with something else. We'll see. I'm also thinking about switching to a expandable broadhead whenever I'm back in Pennsylvania. Again, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll try stuff out, see what I like the best. But in terms of inserts, now everybody cringe with me and tell me how bad I am for touching my broadhead like this. Okay, ready, go. So in terms of inserts, I use the HIT, H-I-T, I don't know, however you want to say it, inserts by Easton. They are hidden inside the arrow shaft, so you can't see them unless you, you know, look down the barrel of the shaft. And I, again, haven't had any issues. I like them because it makes my broadhead flush with the actual arrow, and I've had good results with it. Now, the other kind of broadhead, which I don't even know if you can consider this, it is technically a broadhead, but it's a judo tip. So <laughs> this is what I use for grouse hunting. There are nicer versions. I'll include all of this stuff below. This is like the cheapest option for a judo tip and they totally work. I have killed a handful of grouse with them last year, but if you don't hit the grouse right, it won't actually kill it. So not to be too graphic or anything, but you will need to dispatch if you're not careful with with the grouse hunting and these judo tips but they do work and i always keep some in my pack the nice thing is that they're not actually sharp so normally i'll just wrap them in i don't know like a game bag or whatever i have in my pack that'll just you know help protect this from snagging on things and then if i run into multiple grouse i will have you know multiple tips to shoot at them but judo tips are a must whenever you are small game hunting. One thing that I regret deeply is not using wraps on my arrows when I'm fletching. So I've always run fletchings directly on the shaft and I've never used a wrap. And it, I think it's partially because I never had anybody teach me any differently and that's just how I started fletching my arrows, but this past cycle of fletching when I had crappy glue, I spent so much time scraping the glue off of my arrows and worrying about damaging the arrow and it just being such a pain in the butt. If I had arrow wraps, it would have been so much easier, such a seamless process. So gotta say next time I fletch my arrows I will be using wraps because of my experience this last time. I've got this really cool archery bag it's kind of like a toolkit where I keep all of the things that I need whenever I'm working on my arrows if I'm working on my bow and it has been a lifesaver in some situations like Nick and I have been at archery shoots and I've had that thing in my bag when Nick's D-loop broke and then I had to retie a D-loop for him mm -hmm. while we were on the mountain and it worked. Like that thing has come in handy and I would like to share that with you guys, I think. If you guys think that's interesting, how about that? Like this video and then I'll do a video kind of like my archery toolkit bag dump <laughs> kind of thing, which sounds a little nerdy, but I think it'd be super helpful. Like. If any of you are out there working on your arrows, I'm sure you have tips for me and I have tips for you and this is a good place to share that kind of stuff. So definitely like this video if you wanna see that. But that is it, you guys. This is my current arrow setup. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say and what you guys are currently running because there are so many things that you can do in archery and it can get kind of overwhelming and confusing. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please do share this video and I'll see you in the next one.